Alex and Movements for Life, we have Movement Morsels Workout number two. All right, so we're gonna start with a brief warm up just to get, again, give the hips a little bit of nourishment, depending on what time of day you're doing this. Kind of grease you up a little bit, get you ready, um, and a little bit of some core activation. So I'm gonna pre-position my feet nice and wide. And what I'm gonna be doing is the same side lateral lunge or a lateral run, a lunge, but the key is, I want you to pay attention to my pelvis. So as I'm bending my right leg, and sitting into my hip, notice the hip height. I call that the hip steering wheel. It's really important because that's gonna get into my left groin. At the same time, I'm going to reach overhead and I'm going to bend or side bend in the frontal plane. So this is a double frontal plane. So again, as mentioned earlier, I'm going after my left groin and also my right oblique, all right? So again, I'm just gonna crank out a little bit less repetition, shoot for 10. Just for time purposes, I'm just gonna shorten up on my end, all right? But those are the key things that you wanna look for. Shoot for 10 each side, make sure you get that hip rotation or hip steering wheel, which is in the frontal plane, and that really will get into groin right now on the right side and oblique on the left, all right? So quick little hip and also a little hybrid added core there, a little bit of a twofer for you. All right, side plank. So I do have my legs scissored. You can double stack them. It will make the stability a little bit higher. However, I personally like to scissor my legs because as I'm gonna be reaching with my arm, doing a T rotation, my feet are a little bit more stable to allow my pelvis to be able to shift and twist. So from here, I'm pushing my forearm through the ground and I'm also pulling or pushing my shoulder away from my ear. So I don't wanna have this squishy shoulder where my shoulder is in my ear, all right? So you wanna really actively be pushing down and also pushing down away from the ear as you do your T rotation, all right? Little added stretch at the top. I like to point my thumb back so that'll create some external rotation at the shoulder for a nice enhanced stretch through the pec. All right, so. If you're just joining us first time on Movement Morsels, it is a quad set. So I have an energy system, a lower body, upper body, and core. There's a variety of ways that you can go through it. Listen to the introduction video if you need. I explain everything there, but it's a very scalable quad set because you can do as many or as little rounds depending on what your life and time will allow. All right? So, that being said, warm up done, two exercises, 10 each side. From there, I'm gonna go into my energy system, which is gonna be a basic squat thrust. Um, I do like to use these extensively. There's a number of different variations that I'll take you through. For this one, just the basic squat thrust, no push up at the bottom or burpee. Um, there's a lot of bastardized versions out there that are taking place. So, for our purposes, basic squat thrust. Hands come down, kick your feet back, come forward, and just stand up from there, all right? I do like to bring my feet wide so that my feet land nice and flat. It's a little bit easier. It gives you a little bit more clearance from the hips as opposed to landing narrower with your feet. It's not wrong, it's just different. So hint, hint, that is a variation for different types of squat thrust that you can go through. All right, so from here, again, time purposes, I'm just doing a couple. You wanna shoot for 20 reps. All right, from there, single dumbbell. And we're gonna go with a curtsy lunge to a balance. So I'm gonna be working my right leg. I'm gonna stand in this, what I call flamingo pose. The weight is in my left hand. Now, as I curtsy back, I'm reaching with my opposite arm, my contralateral arm towards my front foot. So my hip is shifting back and out. And then I'm gonna return back into my single leg flamingo, all right? So a ton of stability, ton of balance on this entire hip complex. Woo! Lost my balance as I looked at you. All right, again, time purposes, I'm just gonna crank out a couple. You wanna shoot for all the repetitions for the morsels are 12 to 20. If you wanna go a little bit more strengthy for you, you could go with a heavier weight and bring it closer to 12. For now, we want to go a little bit heavier, then we can play around with even a lower rep range, depending on what your goals are. 
All right, so here's my flamingo. Boom. You will notice a difference between right side and left side, especially woo, if you're somebody who doesn't do unilateral exercises where you get a chance to pick on one side at a time. All right, so that's your curtsy lunge. There's plenty of different variations from there. I like the stability element of it. So it will challenge you quite a bit. All right, so I have a low ceiling here in my basement, unfortunately, which does restrict my overhead pressing. So for me to press, um, I have to get down onto the ground. So this is gonna be a half kneeling variation. I do double kneeling, seated variation. So a ton of different stuff, but as the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. So in order for me to press overhead, I have to lower myself. So the half kneeling, is going to stretch my left anterior hip. So hip flexor quad, as I press up overhead, is on stretch. So if I change my base of support, I'm gonna drastically influence that overhead press. So again, my left anterior hip, getting some love here as I press overhead. All right, you do wanna shoot for, since this is a righty lefty because of my, my stance, you can cut the reps in half, meaning if you're gonna shoot for 20 total reps, you gotta get 10 on each side, all right? So I'm doing a kind of corkscrew, old school Arnold press, as some may know it back in the day, right? Just adds a nice little kind of corkscrew twisting element to it, all right? And then my last exercise for this first quad set, I'm using a stability ball just to add a little bit of instability for this climber variation. And I'm gonna go with my hands on the ball. It's easiest on the wrists if your fingers point out to the sides. If you point your fingers forward, you're just gonna get quite a bit more wrist uh, tension due to all that flexion going on at the wrist, or I should say extension, right? So from here, here's my plank position. I'm pushing through my scaps so my scaps aren't squishy. So I'm spreading them apart, belly button high, hip is tucked slightly, and I'm gonna bring one knee Right up the middle, sagittal plank climber. Slow, steady. I'm keeping my head and neck in line, right? I don't have this forward head posture. So I'm maintaining a nice long spine. A lot of tension at the abdominals. Shoot for 20 here, this is a great one, right? A lot of instability. Crowd favor right there. All right, so that's your first four. I'm gonna refer to my cheat sheet, go through our last four. All right, so jumping jacks. I do like to use jumping jacks because there's a lot of coordination to it. There's a number of different jumping jack variations that you can go through. So let me just show you another variation. So I'm gonna have my feet in sync, meaning they're gonna be moving together, sagittal plane. So it's gonna be a forwards and backwards jumping jack. My arms are gonna be moving in the frontal plane out of sync, which is a traditional jumping jack arm pattern. See if I can not bash my hands overhead. All right, so it'll look something like this. I'm just bending my arms at the top just so I don't smash sheet rock. Side view, little forwards and backwards. All right, crank out your 20 reps, and you're good to go. All right, next move is going to be a hip bridge on the ball. There are a number of variations you can do. I like the ball versus the floor because it just changes the angle between the shoulders and the hips. I like having them at the same height instead of having the shoulders at the height and having that huge incline. All will work, they're all variations and there's pros and cons to each one. Quick little setup here and execution on the hip bridge. Many complain of lower back and or hamstring seizing when you're in a ball bridge. So the key is when you are up in the top of your bridge and you're pressing your belly button up in the air via your glutes and your hips, you have to also tuck your tailbone. If your lower back is arching, you're actually rolling into an anterior tilt. That is gonna, one, piss off your lower back because you're slamming it, and then two, your hamstrings are gonna start kicking in. So they're gonna start seizing up on you. So again, the key, belly button nice and high, hip is tucking. So I'm rotating it this way, as if I'm trying to flatten my lower back, okay? So keep that in mind. I'm gonna use a kettlebell. Uh, there's a number of different devices that have come out in the market now because this exercise has gotten wildly popular. Um, 
Kettlebell for me works well. I also have sand bells that conform to my torso. So it works really, really well. So again, hip is coming up, belly button nice and high, hip tuck. Lower on down to the ground and drive straight up from here. This is a big time butt roaster. That is who we're focusing on, which is your glutes. At the top of the motion, you're going to get a gentle stretch in the hip flexors and quads. All right, again, time purposes. I'm short in my rep range. You wanna go 12 to 20 and you'll get a nice roast out of that. All right, next move from there is gonna be a dumbbell bent over row. All right, so from here, I like to have a nice wide footprint. I'm just hinging forward. I'm doing a one arm variation and I really like this one because from here, I can reach down with my opposite arm as I'm pulling with the right. So there's great opposition. So I'm gonna get a lot of thoracic rotation while I'm in that bent over row position. So my hamstrings, my hips are being challenged because this is a fixed deadlift to be in a bent over row while I can connect this motion into a very effective pull pattern. All right. Again, I'm using that opposite arm to push or to reach down. Ton of twist, keep the head nice and quiet, and keep as close to the neutral spine as possible. Awesome, awesome row. All right, and then last but not least, this is gonna be a prone, what I call T reach, not to be confused with a T rotation. So for the T reach, it's more of a core stability mode. So I'm gonna position my hands close to each other, my feet wide. Belly button is high, hip is tucked. You're gonna notice that a lot. And I'm pushing through my arms. So the T reach, I'm trying to reach out to the side. So think about side wall touching, pause, exhale, versus the T rotation, as I mentioned earlier, which looks something like this, right? So again, the T reach, I'm reaching out to the side. So how stable, I'll give you another view. How stable can I keep my hip and my lower back as I reach out and create this instability. As this arm reaches out to the side, gravity's trying to pull me down, right? So I have to intrinsically resist that, all right? Very, very challenging. Get that as close as you can to 20 reps or work up to it if you can't get it. Super tough, super effective. Enjoy week two, and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much.